Well, good evening all. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up and for a correction day, April 2nd, 2024. No, it's not April Fool's Day, it's the day after. And you would think I was joking if I said we finally got a correction in the market. And I for one was cheering it on. Uh, today was one of those days where you might've decided, hey, I'm gonna try to pick a few things up that are getting hit pretty hard, or you might've sat back. What put the market down, in my opinion? What's put the market down is the JOLTS report came out and it showed an increase in jobs, just the opposite of what the market was actually looking for. It wasn't materially higher, but it's higher. And what that tells me at least is that if employers are still looking for people, that the jobs market is strong. Now, the quits rate is very small. So people are not jumping from job to job with the idea they're going to get higher pay, big bonus and all that. They're actually staying in their jobs longer now. And the reason is that higher pay isn't there. That part of the pandemic from uh, two years ago is pretty much over. If you've got a job you like, it's great. If not, well, you're gonna move around, but you're probably not gonna get big pay bumps anymore. Whatever those jobs are paying, they're paying. But the one thing that hasn't happened is the cutbacks. Now, it's interesting where we did see the growth, state and federal government, interesting. It wasn't in private hospitality and it wasn't in service, which market could take that to be a bit, a bit of weakness. Uh, we saw today Tesla come uh, and get hit. We've seen other markets, Nvidia down $9 today. Uh, we've seen other markets down such as Amazon, 20 some odd cents, Netflix down a dime. Look at Netflix went as low as 605. It recovered most of that loss. So you get days like today where if you pick your opening, you take a shot in the market, you're looking for stuff. Remember I told you, you have to have your shopping list ready because nobody's gonna ring a bell and tell you when these corrections come. They seem to come out of left field. When we're taking a look at our Freeport, you can see it is still up for new highs on the move. Now, what is moving in the market is the gold market, the energy markets. Those are the ones on the move, and I'm gonna explain why one more time for you. There is a race by central banks to see who's gonna be cutting rates, ideally starting in June. And if that is what's going to happen, those countries, as they cut rates, will start spurring the economies. And whatever you need to spur the economies, energy, raw materials, and the like, get a bid. Certainly the biggest of those that is doing it is China. And the market is responding with higher energy prices and certainly higher Freeport. Energy in part up because Israel did attack in Syria an Iranian diplomatic base. And it did kill seven of the leaders of Iran. And in doing so, Iran has now said they're going to hit Israel at Iran's designated time and place to get them back. Okay, we'll see what happens with that. In FCX, you can see the swing line has got a vertical price rise. And this all happened from the time, it's really Sunday, when we saw the manufacturing PMIs give you a bump finally, showing expansion. And the market has responded to that in a very favorable manner. You've got a market that keeps running. It's over the key 18-day average. The green is the 100. The gray is the 200-day average. And the next target's the Bollinger Top at the 49.35 level. It might be a little higher tomorrow, but it's in that zone. Now, Sean Berger set back today and came all the way back to challenge the gray line, which is the 200-day average, and the red, the 18. In doing so, it took out a prior break low. So this rally that began literally right here went sideways for a bit, ended, and now you've got a lower and low, higher high pattern. If you lose the embedded reading with the red line closing tomorrow under 79. The odds favor this market's gonna flub it up for a while. It might even drop a bit more in here, but it doesn't have to. It's already come down to a key support zone, but the momentum to the upside will have come out of it. In DraftKings, as I mentioned to you yesterday, I thought getting down to the 18-day average was about all that the pros would look for on the downside. Let's face it, you just came 
and we're coming to the end of the March Madness for the basketball, big betting, and yes, the profit taking set into the market, but now the profits are gonna show up as to how much was really bet during this crazy basketball season. It is a good one, too. If you're looking at the, the United States Gasoline Fund, up and away, I'm gonna repeat, spring, summer driving, coming along. Wouldn't surprise me if we go in America up to the $4 a barrel area. I still think that's going to be the case. In ex, uh, that's $4 a gallon for, for the most basic of the gasoline. When you put the premium uh, blends in, it'll be higher. And of course, state taxes can go crazy. In XLF on the financial services, the big question this market has to deal with is, are we going to see rate cuts or not? I'm still of the camp that you haven't shown me anything, including today's jolts data, that makes me think June is in play. So I'm the opposite of what I think the majority on TV are saying. I will join them like that if the data starts to weaken. I don't think the jolts data did that, and other data I've seen hasn't done it. And as you know, the naysayers will dig into things to finally find that one item where they go, I don't think you're right on that, Ira. I'm seeing that if it weren't for the government hiring, we wouldn't have all those uh, ads out there that that's where the jobs were filled. Maybe, just maybe. In XLI, you're still in an uptrend. You got to the Bollinger Bands, and each time you've gotten up there, I think you'd agree, you do get a correction in this market. You are overbought. I can make an argument for further price decline as low as the red line, the 18-day average to find the support. In the CMA, sorry, we got a bad quote on that, just came through. You can see how the market, though, went down to the Bollinger Band, and that's where it's trying to actually hold. In RSPD, we have a higher high and a lower low coming into the market. Not seeing anything that I'm in love with right there. Uh, did the market hold up in its uptrend? It has given up the uptrend that was started right here when the market got up, made the higher highs, and on the pullbacks kept going. This break low today breaks that whole pattern. So now you've taken all that momentum out of the market and put whatever the market's going to be into a question mark. In the home builders, you can see how we're getting uh, that bad data one more time here. And that happens sometimes as they do this. But to, suffice to say, a lot of the different home builders are being put on watch by the analyst companies. And the reason they're being put on this watch has very much to do with the fact that the discounts are coming in hot and heavy from home builders to get mortgage rates down, which affects profit margins, which affects overall profit in the market. And that's what is going on. And we're not seeing interest rates drop. If anything, if you're looking at the 10 year, you're seeing a rate up to the four, what, nearly just under the 4-4 level, got to be careful, okay? If mortgages stay up, how do the home builders do things? They have to buy down the mortgage rate. On the energy sector, as long as you're embedded, I look for the market up. Now you got to the upper Bollinger Band for the first time since back here. I expect that you'll see some profit taking off of that. In the gold market, sorry about this, I have no control when they throw in these crazy quotes at the end of the day, but we are getting craziness uh, there. We're three days in a row over the upper band. In the silver, you're the first day over the upper Bollinger band, and silver was a big gainer today on gold. So we'll see if the whole metal market wants to lift with it. If, if FCX is up, Copper was up, you can see what that's doing. In TLT, down to the lower Bollinger Band, looking for the support coming in right through there. In UUP, as you can see what the market is doing right here, it is fighting very hard to continue to the upside, and it's doing so. This is the US dollar. As long as interest rates stay up, as long as the economy stays strong, as long as jobs are plentiful, why would you even think the short side of the dollar? It doesn't make sense. In the euro, I'm sorry about these quotes, but they're coming in bad at this hour, and there's not much I can do with that as it all comes in that way. Uh, suffice to say, barring the bad quotes, we're getting a bit of a correction in the market. Will it be that 2-3% overall correction or more in stock indices is what the traders will ask? Today had over a 2% correction in one day, 
in the Russell 2000. You did not do that in any of the other main indices. Only the Russell did it. And it's been, if you will, the lowest of the, um, the markets in terms of holding things together. So we got to be careful as to what you are. And as you know, the people that uh, were broadening out their trade were looking to those type of stocks, hoping that if the market went up as a whole, the rising tide picks all stocks up with it. I cover this in a lot more with much more accurate quotes in the morning spider ETF video. I do that at nine in the morning. And what takes place at nine in the morning is we open them up, we take a look at the charts. I have more studies on the morning charts, by the way. And as we're going through it, we're looking, I'm giving you just a sampling. I, I rotate these all the time, but we're always looking at the metals, the indices, individual stocks, the energies as to where they're at. I'll cover banks from time to time. And we try to put together ideas for you on it, looking at both the daily and the weekly chart. I explain what I'm seeing, why I'm seeing it. You can take that from there. There'll be times I'm fully in step with the market and it gets to be a heck of a lot of fun. And at times some guys get out of step. I was one of those. Uh, that had to wait for the past three weeks to finally put on more trades. And today I put on a bunch more, win, lose, or draw. We'll see what happens with some of these trades. How do you get this? You go to irapstein.com. And under that, you just go to the word research. You can move your cursor up here. It'll, see it. It'll show you an icon. Give that a click. Go to research. I'm Ira. You have a great day.